Released by Taeyeon in 2023 on the PC, PS5, and Xbox series, Robocop Rogue City would be a first-person shooter bridging together the movies Robocop 2 and Robocop 3. Directed by Piotr Latocha and written by Jerzy Zaluski, the game would feature Peter Weller in his likeness reprising the role of Robocop. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. As the game begins, shortly after the events of Robocop 2, Detroit News puts the spotlight on a new guy seeking to rally the gangs of old Detroit. Answering the call, Soot, leader of the Torchheads gang, leads a hostile takeover of the news station during a live broadcast to advertise their services, boasting they are also the leading supplier of the popular narcotic, Nuke. Arriving on scene to handle the hostage situation is the Detroit police, though seeing the gang has already begun killing hostages, Officer Murphy decides to handle the situation immediately, entering the building with his partner, Officer Lewis. Crossing the flames is no problem for Robocop as he cures the crime disease of Detroit one bullet at a time. Soot sends them a message about leaving the party early as Murphy still sees himself as human, agreeing with Lewis to resolve the hostage situation quickly. Suddenly, Murphy starts to have visions of his past wife and kid that cause a glitching with his programming, which gives him pause as he sees his wife's face on one of the hostages. Fortunately, Lewis has his back, but one of the Channel 9 crew, a reporter named Samantha Ortiz, catches Robocop's hesitation on film and runs the story with an angle, claiming the malfunction puts public safety in the hands of an unreliable machine. Max Becker, head of OCP Security Concepts Division, handles the PR but personally agrees that Robocop should be scrapped, but passes along the old man wants him examined and fixed instead. To this effect, Becker has a monitoring chip installed on Robocop to run checks at all times, and police psychologist Dr. Olivia Blanche has been assigned to him as part of his evaluation. At the same time, Sergeant Reed briefs everyone on how the new guy is spurring the most prominent gangs to act up, eager to earn his money, and so they seek to locate him first before things get out of control. Reed deploys Robocop to the downtown arcade as it's become a hotspot for the Torchheads and may be a lead to the new guy through Soot. He adds that Officer Briggs has been missing for over 24 hours, and while the two cases may not be related, Robocop hits the streets looking for creeps. The rain slick roads of the city host problems big and small for the cop as Murphy balances the ethics of resolving problems between serving public trust, which sometimes clashes with his other prime directive of upholding the law. Raiding the Torchhead hideout in the basement of the arcade, Murphy sees the gang selling nuke to kids here, busting the operation with brutal impunity, and learning where Soot is hiding a captured police informant. Entering the ghost house, Murphy rescues the police informant who goes by the alias Pickles, who passes along the new guy supposed to meet Soot at Soot's upcoming band performance at the old slaughterhouse. Pickles also happens to regularly work with Officer Briggs, owing him a debt of gratitude, but the last time Pickles saw him was when Briggs was checking a case of missing bodies. Arriving at Soot's place, Lewis questions if Murphy will glitch again, but he replies that this is what Becker's chip is supposed to handle. He adds Alex Murphy is technically dead, but she counters that despite that, he carries on and is more than just his machine parts. She hands him a small box to open the next time Becker annoys him, as when they enter the slaughterhouse, they learn that despite Kane, the creator of Nuke being killed at the end of Robocop 2, his factories are still running across Detroit. Finding this to be one such lab, Robocop lays down the law as the gang rams him with a bulldozer and the duo crashes Soot's live performance with pyrotechnics of their own. Cornering Soot, he talks tough until Robocop starts wrecking house and destroying his instruments, but just then the new guy himself contacts Robocop on Lewis's radio asking for a prisoner exchange. Dragging Soot with him, visual feedback loops begin to hit Robocop again as he continues to be hit by nightmarish visions and sees a well-dressed man keeping Lewis at gunpoint. As the new guy takes out a lighter to light a cigarette, Robocop is suddenly staggered as the new guy expresses his displeasure with Soot, putting a spotlight on him publicly. The new guy guns down Soot as his reward, introducing himself as Wendell Antonowski, brother to Emil Antonowski who was one of the original gang members who sadistically murdered Officer Murphy. While Robocop tries to resist, he is somehow unable to act, paralyzed before Wendell, who wonders why Robocop refuses to let go of his human weakness. He admits at first he wanted revenge for his brother, but chose instead to let such weakness go and declares he will help the cyborg do the same. Wendell then quickly shoots Lewis as Robocop shuts down, though when he is turned back on, a furious Becker tells him he malfunctioned again as Lewis survived but is unconscious and in critical condition. Undergoing a forced therapy session with Dr. Blanche, Robocop is asked more about his self-perception where he believes he is Alex Murphy, resurrected with a new body. Dr. Blanche replies with a story how she lost her hand when an ED-209 unit responded to an emergency call at her home when it was robbed and shot her hand off. Since then, she has become somewhat wary of robots and sees their sessions as a chance to improve the stability of experimental units. 
Afterwards, Murphy reports back to Becker, who is interviewing an eager applicant named Ulysses Washington, agreeing to hire the young man as long as he reports directly to Becker with his new job as Robocop's overseer. Tossing him a bloody badge, Becker says they don't make new badges for new officers and just reassign the old ones as he tells Robocop he is off the Antonowski case. Instead, he is assigned to archiving documents in the records room now alongside Officer Cecil, but Murphy takes advantage of the situation, using the police computers to learn more about Antonowski but finds out Officer Briggs was the last person to do so too. Briggs' investigation brought him to the Steel Mill, which is the territory of the Street Vultures gang, and Cecil thinks the cases might be connected after all. Disregarding Becker's orders, Robocop mobilizes as Washington says he's honored to work with Robocop and will do his best to support him but still tries and fails to stop him from going on his own. Recalling Lewis's words, Murphy opens the box she gave him before, finding his old badge within with a note that it's never been reassigned. Reflecting on this, Robocop drives out to Highland Park while Washington still supports him on dispatch, giving him information on the gang and their leader, Spike. Following their imposing invitation, Robocop learns that while the street vultures refuse to deal in drugs, stealing and destroying what they can from the torch heads, they prefer to deal in smuggling. Finding an abandoned squad car recently riddled with bullets, Robocop fends off the bike gang and their pack tactics as he corners the gang accountant who confirms an injured officer was brought in recently. Moving on this new information, Robocop struts past the thugs as they increase their firepower but once again is slowed by seeing visions of Murphy's past. He locates a recording of Spike torturing Officer Briggs as Wendell was here as well, claiming the police won't be responding to calls from this area as he closes a deal with the street vultures with the murder of Briggs. Unfortunately, the trail runs cold as Robocop finds what remains of Officer Briggs in a freezer alongside dozens of other cadavers. Reporting this to Washington, the rookie calls in backup as Spike talks to the cyborg over the speaker, protesting that they are helping the city by turning death and decay into life. Meeting the other officers, Robocop is informed Samantha arrived before even they did, and they secured an ED-209 unit to crush the vultures. The reporter makes it clear she is not against Robocop, just OCP, determined to expose the truth before the company tries to cover things up. Murphy decides to serve the public with some transparency before teaming up with the ED-209 unit to slam down the fist of the law on the scum of Detroit. Cornering Spike, he surrenders, but at this time the ED-209 malfunctions during the arrest, giving Spike a chance to escape as the robot guns down an officer. Forced to strike back, Washington helps Robocop with information on the machine's weak points, allowing him to perform a manual override with sufficient bullets applied to its core. Before hunting down Spike for his information on Wendell, Murphy checks in on Lewis, still recovering from her wound, as he overhears someone has stolen dozens of corpses from the hospital morgue. Investigating, he learns only bodies with their brains intact have been stolen, as security footage reveals the perpetrator to have been Wendell. Back at the precinct, the cops are furious OCP gave them a faulty ED-209 unit that directly killed one of their own, though Washington thanks Murphy for the example he set on his first mission, inspiring him to improve himself. Pickles is also upset to hear Briggs has died, intent on repaying him by helping dig up more info on Wendell. Meanwhile, Sergeant Reed agrees Wendell is their main target now, ordering the capture of their new lead, Spike. However, they are interrupted as news breaks out that the street vultures are robbing the OCP bank in broad daylight as Robocop is reinstated and put back on the Wendell case under the pretense of stopping the heist and protecting OCP's money. SWAT on the scene shares there are hostages in a bomb threat too, though Murphy catches Samantha sneaking inside the bank through the side. SWAT brings in the heat as Robocop dishes out cold justice as the street vultures buckle under their combined barrage. Robocop catches Samantha in the bank manager's office, who brings up OCP's plan to wrongfully evict thousands of people in Old Detroit in order to complete their utopian Delta City project. She adds she has found evidence OCP is in fact scamming even the people who willfully sell their property and homes to OCP for this endeavor. Robocop chooses to serve public trust, allowing her to leave with his evidence as the reporter sees Murphy in a more positive light now. Rescuing the hostages in the vault lobby, Robocop sees Becker among them while the bank manager has a bomb strapped to his chest, and with Washington's guidance, they stay calm and no one explodes. With the bomb defused, Becker checks in on OCP's money but is mad to see there is almost none as he is told the old man has spent nearly all of the company's liquid assets on an ambitious project of some kind. Robocop intercepts the radio of street vultures who have escaped into a tunnel they created on the side of the bank, cutting off their escape and coming into contact with Spike. Spike explains his gang broke off from Wendell after he failed to pay them for their services and so they thought to take what they were owed themselves. Wondering why that meant OCP's money, Murphy returns to the police station and during his psych evaluation, Dr. Blanche discusses with him the role of memories in his life and duty as they seem to still emerge during missions. Openly, they talk about the feelings they evoke, which may be seen as a benefit or obstacle depending on one's perspective and self-perception as a human or machine or something in between. 
After debriefing, Sergeant Reed wants to know why the Vultures and Wendell had a falling out, but first, Murphy has been called upon to meet with the old man himself downtown in person. Before leaving, Mayor Kuzak informs Robocop the mayoral election is coming soon and warns him OCP has installed a candidate who is running against him in office, even planning to use Robocop for his public image. Becker also pauses Murphy, ordering him to investigate an apartment whose occupant is suspected of domestic terrorism. On the way to checking this out, Murphy helps Washington patrol his first beat, which leads to on-the-job training of surviving his first shootout with armed thugs. After serving the public trust and a kid some fresh dance moves, Robocop learns the apartment Becker wanted busted belongs to Samantha, but pauses when she presents evidence of corrupt OCP policies exploiting the public. Murphy observes that Becker has agents watching him too, exposing a lack of trust, and he chooses to allow the citizen to conduct their independent investigation within the constraints of the law, adhering to his directive of protecting the innocent. Meeting with the old man, Robocop sees the CEO's health is in such poor condition he cannot stand up for long anymore. He shares that he once grew up in this very apartment, back when Detroit was thriving and not the largest US city to file for bankruptcy. This personal motivation drove his dream to turn it into the most prosperous district of the city with the Delta City Project, emphasizing he intends to replace the old and frail with the new and strong. He also mentions how terrible death and decay is when one loses everything they worked for their entire life. Coming to the reason he wanted to talk, the old man is concerned about Robocop's recent instabilities and urges him to continue his sessions with Dr. Blanche. Taking his leave, the officer is met by John Mills, Kuzak's rival for the mayoral election, who says he's tired of how bad Kuzak allowed things to become, wishing to work with Robocop and OCP to improve the city. Back on the trail for Spike, Murphy finds the gang leader captured and beaten up by Torchheads as Spike warns them Wendell will backstab them too. After Robocop saves him, he confesses Wendell paid him to extract brains from corpses, though never revealed why. Tracing the signal of Spike's broadcast, Robocop finds a meeting Wendell is attending, finding Samantha already there too, having followed an OCP trail here too. Seeing Wendell as he smokes staggers Robocop again as he moves forward to arrest the criminals, but they ram a car into him and suddenly Murphy finds himself lost in his memories again. Pursuing Wendell through an abandoned mall, Robocop is unable to focus as his illusions intensify, seeing friends and allies also turn against him, walking through his old home and confronting himself as Murphy. Murphy asks for his badge back and for the cyborg to stop pretending he is a resurrected man, straining the emotions of those around him. Robocop refuses, insisting his memories are his own and he is Alex Murphy, defending himself against this ghost of the past. Snapping back to reality, Robocop catches Wendell on his cutting-edge satellite phone, arresting him with no hesitation as Wendell claims he was trying to release Robocop from the burden of his past memories. Seeing the cyborg wishes to keep his memories, Wendell now claims he can give back all of his memories, insisting they work together as they both have the same boss. As the news spreads the story on Robocop busting the new guy, public debate emerges on his status as a human being as John Mills claims he will advocate granting human rights to Robocop if elected. At the same time, the old man suffers a heart attack and is admitted to a private wing in the hospital and Dr. Blanche wishes to examine Robocop's recent episode. While these visions were more corrupted illusions, she thinks these are different from the times when specific memories were triggered, adding that emotional reactions go hand in hand with normal human interactions. Later, even though Wendell is behind bars, there is still the statement he made of acting on behalf of someone at OCP. Sergeant Reed thinks Wendell's confession of further sabotage by OCP will dredge up the sentiment of the police going on strike, so finding the accomplice as soon as possible is crucial. Everyone thinks Becker is the number one suspect and it so happens he wants to meet Robocop alone at an old factory as Murphy heads out with Washington keeping an eye on things just in case. Just then, Murphy gets word Lewis has woken up in the hospital, checking in on her and updating her on the case. Checking in on the old man as well, it turns out the CEO is aware he is not long for this world, supporting Robocop being recognized as a human and regretting he would not last to see Delta City become a reality. He asks Murphy what it's like to not only die but also come back, believing Robocop is proof that death is not the end. Finally, he warns Robocop about Becker, knowing the weasel aims to destroy not only Robocop but also the reputation of the company he built. Meeting with Becker, the executive spits on the creators of Robocop for allowing him autonomy, introducing him to an army of droids modified from the Robocop 2 project that are now pure machines. Bragging about their power, efficiency, and obedience, with a single remote, Becker has dozens of the urban enforcement droids swarm and attack Robocop with all manner of weapons. Becker also declares the Detroit police unprofitable and intends to replace them all with UEDs, as Washington runs tactical on Robocop's comms and together they smash apart Becker's prototypes. Confronting Becker, it turns out John Mills is there too, applauding the weapons demonstration proving which project was better in the end. 
Robocop accuses Becker of conspiracy, but Becker counters that Wendell's vague confession is not hard proof pointing at him, once again bemoaning how Robocop's organic components are just as unreliable as his deduction. With this, Becker returns to the precinct, informing them all they will be replaced by his UEDs, and while Sergeant Reed doesn't accept this, he also doesn't agree with going on strike in retaliation. In addition, while Becker is unsufferable, he is also not the brain thief nor financing Wendell, and so Murphy thinks to press Wendell for a name directly. Visiting Wendell in prison, the warden says OCP is keeping his record secret, wondering who he really is. He finds it awfully suspicious, since Wendell has somehow turned all of the gangs against each other, inciting chaos in a remarkably short time. Talking with Wendell, the criminal claims the offer to restore Murphy's memories is still on the table, as it's possible thanks to the OCP secret project called Afterlife. Suddenly, alarms go off and an unsurprised Wendell is taken away as the guards declare a massive prison riot has broken out. Stepping up to sweep the slime back into their cells, Robocop ends the sentence served by any savage inmate with capital punishment. Reclaiming the prison block by block, Robocop now sees elite mercenaries en route to Wendell's cell as well, gunning down prisoners and guards alike, realizing the riot is just a cover for Wendell's breakout. Robocop finds the private security forces heavily armed and armored as they take Wendell to the prison depository to reclaim his effects, and with a golden lighter, Wendell is able to somehow cause a system failure in Robocop again. He tells him he sends some of his men to the hospital to clean up loose ends, including Officer Lewis, as Robocop finds he is unable to target Wendell for some reason, helpless to prevent him from getting away. Heading straight to the hospital, Murphy finds dozens of hospital staff murdered, though is relieved to see Lewis fully recovered and able to hold her own. Back at the precinct, morale is at an all-time low as many of the officers are frustrated to go out and fight against Wendell when he also works for OCP, and even OCP is actively working against the force, prompting several of them to think about going on strike. What more, Dr. Blanche is oddly absent as Murphy checks in on her and she shares that her computer was hacked and all of her work on Robocop has gone missing from the precinct. However, since most of her records were on paper and not on the stolen computer data, she fears whoever erased the data may come after her too, strongly suspecting OCP is behind this. Before moving out to ensure her safety, Robocop learns from Washington that calls to the police from a certain rundown district are being rerouted and ignored without them knowing. As the officers discuss how tech-savvy the mercenaries working under Wendell are, they all feel the only person with a lot of money, influence over Becker, and interest in a Robocop at OCP is the old man himself, but they also know they cannot accuse him without hard evidence. Meeting with Dr. Blanche, she says she suspects OCP was behind the cyber attack as only they knew about Robocop's data on that terminal, but insists sharing her results in one last session. She delves into topics of transhumanism, observing the very real relationships Murphy has been able to build and maintain, the human memories that manifest intensely as they break through mechanical barriers, and demonstrating behavior that can only be thought of as willpower. Robocop thinks of himself as a human, and in conclusion, Dr. Blanche not only agrees, but feels he is an exceptional one. Suddenly, they are interrupted as Wendell's mercs burst in, guns blazing, and Robocop responds in kind, protecting and escorting the doctor past the gunfire and actual fire burning down the building. He puts her under Lewis's protection as he traces the origin of the hack on her compromised computer, and helps Washington clean out the scum in downtown that are somehow being supported by OCP to make the area worse on purpose. Following the trail into the sewers, Robocop finds the mercenaries have set up bases here, and the data stolen has been used to prepare an OCP presentation for Afterlife. Lewis thinks all signs so far are pointing to the old man as the mastermind, as Robocop enters OCP headquarters and thanks to Samantha, finds evidence OCP is scamming people out of their homes for the Delta City project. However, when he enters the boardroom, he finds it empty, instead watching the promotional video for Afterlife, a consumer cyborg initiative promising life after death thanks to OCP technology. However, he also learns this is all staged, Afterlife doesn't work, and at the last minute the meeting was cancelled. Entering the old man's office with the intent to arrest his benefactor, Robocop sees Becker now sitting in the CEO's chair, proud to announce the old man passed away earlier in the day and he is now acting CEO. There is already a Japanese company looking to buy OCP and Becker is looking to trim a lot of the expenses of the company, starting with cancelling Afterlife and Delta City. He adds Wendell is no longer a threat because with the old man gone, no one is funding Wendell's mercenaries or operations so he'll just collapse on his own. For his next move, he intends to fire the police and replace them with improved droids that he will show off at an upcoming weapons expo, ordering Robocop to attend too. Leaving Becker to enjoy the hookers he's brought in, Lewis confirms with Murphy the police have been fired. Robocop believes a desperate Wendell is going to seize weapons from the expo with the last of his funds, heading there and finding another Robocop 2 model there as well. 
Beginning the expo with a three-second minute of silence to honor the old man, Becker claims in lieu of the police strike his UEDs will protect Detroit, The Robocop corrects him that the police were actually fired. Moving on, Becker finds he is missing his controller when his UED suddenly turns hostile towards him, but Robocop saves his life, sensing more incoming and telling everyone to clear out. The weapons expo becomes a live-fire demonstration as dozens of hostile droids demolish the venue. Keeping Becker alive against even a rogue ED-209, Becker brags about OCP entering an arms race and plans to position the company as a war profiteer. They see Wendell as indeed behind this attack, stating that now that the old man doesn't need Robocop anymore, he doesn't either. Once again, he is able to stagger Robocop, who is captured by the mercenaries while seeing visions of his allies getting murdered before him. Wendell reveals his golden lighter has been the key, as the monitoring chip they installed in the cyborg also ensured Robocop could not touch Wendell, as the old man gave Wendell the lighter, which could cause interference in Murphy's brain on demand. After Wendell steals all of the weapons and leaves, Robocop is found by the police and returned back to the precinct, where it's revealed OCP sabotaged him while also collecting data as their one successful cyborg for the benefit of the Afterlife Project. After they remove the control chip, Samantha now arrives, saying that with no cops or UEDs on the streets, Detroit is literally on fire as every gang is rampaging across the city. Adding fuel to the fire, Wendell's broadcasting to the public, pushing the people's despair past the breaking point and spurring them to burn down the worthless city and build something new and better on the ashes. Rallying with few officers remain who wish to help, Murphy, Lewis, and Washington first protect people who came out for election night results for the new mayor, but after doing so, focus on stopping the ringleader Wendell once and for all. Taking out the trash across town, Robocop protects the innocent and punishes the remnants of the torchheads and street vultures, foiling the bike gang's plans to blow up the Detroit Bridge. Tracking down Wendell's trail, they discover a secret lab where the Afterlife Project was being conducted. As it turns out, Wendell was the project coordinator for Afterlife, reporting to the old man directly and making use of the stolen brains and Robocop's data for something, but strangely they find the aftermath of some sort of attack from something big. Catching up to Wendell, standing in the construction site for Delta City, he declares it will be his new empire, but Robocop pauses the entire mercenary crew by exposing that Wendell has no more money to pay them with. Seeing the lighter no longer works on Robocop, Wendell flees as the mercenaries abandon him after confirming they aren't getting paid, assuring Robocop it was nothing personal. Wendell prepares his robot army, but has his hand blown off alongside the remote. Bleeding out, Wendell reveals Wendell Antonowski isn't even his real name, as OCP gave him that identity to trigger strong emotional responses from Murphy. Wendell offers to help Robocop take out the bigger crooks in this mess, OCP, but Robocop insists that dead or alive, he's coming with him, gunning down the ambitious linchpin and watching him fall to his death. With the case finally closed, Robocop returns to the precinct, seeing things calm down and reflects on the various people he helped around him who appreciate him in kind. However, the peace is broken as suddenly there is news of mass murder in the OCP headquarters, and arriving on the scene, Robocop sees Robocop 2 strangling the life out of Becker, but it's revealed the mind of the old man has been transplanted into this machine body. The old man plays a message for Murphy as he snaps Becker's neck and tosses his dead body through the Delta City model. Within, the old man says he's been impressed that people not only love Robocop for who he is, Robocop himself never lost his humanity and kept his memories despite his machine exterior. Seeing this, the old man saw hope in living past his failing human body, wishing to remain human as a cyborg just like Robocop. With a second chance, he can become something bigger than himself, striving to become selfless and uncorrupted. However, Robocop sees only a berserk killing machine before him and sentences it for the future of the city it sold for one man's selfish dream. Refusing to be arrested, Robocop 2 fights back with all the weapons in its arsenal, and as the two cyborgs duke it out, the entire building collapses under the sheer power of the blows traded in the duel to the death of two men who already died. Edging out a win, Robocop decides to save the old man from himself, despite everything he's done. However, recalling his words to become selfless, the old man pushes Robocop aside from falling debris, as he is destroyed for good, and Murphy thanks the old man. As the game ends, the OCP building collapses just as Robocop struts out in time, and as a week passes, the company executives continue their goal of building Delta City. Japanese company Kanemitsu shows interest in the company's project as well, while Samantha is exposed to be working with a woman in the underworld known as Bertha. Life in Detroit continues on its turbulent course, but as the sun rises on a new day, Robocop returns to active duty as events continue into Robocop 3. Robocop Rogue City has enjoyed the success of selling over 500,000 copies worldwide.
I'm gonna go ahead and say, not only is this the best Robocop game I've ever played, but one of the most fun games I've played all year thanks to its authentic and lore respectful world building, fun gameplay, and great level design. Come for the violence and satire, stay for the transhumanism debate. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next Battlefield.